it's about time that we start, we as the people, start standing up to those that could care less about us. What's going on, everyone? Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Mindset Podcast. Today, we have the privilege of being joined by Robert Asensio. Robert previously served in the Florida House of Representatives from 2016 to 2018. He is currently running for commissioner of District 11 for Miami-Dade County. Robert, why don't you tell our viewers a little bit more about yourself and who you are? Thank you. Hi, everyone. Like I said, my name is Robert Asensio. I, I, a resident of West Dade, I've been living in West Dade this time around, like 21 years. Um, before that, I lived in Broward, and before that, I lived in West Dade when I was in the service, so for about 10 years. Um, for those of you that know the area, I lived on, I live close to 100, by FIE, 122nd Avenue. And the irony is that many years ago, I lived in the same area, just south of here, by Village Green. So I'm a career public servant. I've spent 34 years, a lot longer than many people here are alive. Uh, serving the public. I was started out in the military, spent six years in the military, special operations. Um, that was really the place to go for me. And it did wonders. It allowed me to travel the world, see, work with some really, really neat people. And then I came back to Miami and um, I joined the police force. And I became a member of the Miami-Dade County Public Schools. Many of you have grown up with school police, hopefully good experiences. And if not, there's a place to complain about that. Uh, but, but as I went through my, my career in, in, in a diverse career in, in police, I went from being on the road to working in the schools to investigating. And then ultimately, I ran a public corruption unit, right? Um, I worked very closely at the local, state, and federal level on cases that, that like that investigating not just police officers, but also politicians. Um, never, never wanted to run for office. Close to the end of my career, I'm supervising the police stations that are responsible for the officers in the schools. I'm working with the other agencies. And as I got closer to retirement, I began to look at what was going to be there for my son. What kind of future my son had? What was, what was his career path? How easy was it going to be for him to buy a house, um, get a great job, go to school? We had already paid for the college, but we knew that it was going to be very difficult because prices continue to go up. Yeah. So I went to be talk to my uh, legislator, my state representative. And it was like deer in the headlights, crickets. I would ask them about different things. And I'm you know, like, why is it that we have crappy transportation, public transportation? He'd give me an answer. It really was not answering the question. We've been paying half penny sales tax. We should have better transportation. Other states, other countries that are less developed, have better transportation, system of public transportation. That adds to a critical problem that we all have. We all experience traffic, right? Yeah. I mean, bad amount of traffic in West Day. If you live in West Day, you know what traffic's like. So, so, you know, affordability housing, right? So I asked about affordability housing. And it was, it was, it was, they were answers that just left me feeling very uncomfortable. So I ran for office, you know, if, if the system our democratic system is about the people and for the people and by the people, then I want to be one of those people. And I ran for the state house. And with the help of high school and college um, young adults, we were able to win. We, we actually accomplished something that people said couldn't be done. So if anybody ever tells you you can't do it, if you do the numbers right and you, you're very strategic about it, and you're confident, and there is a pathway there. There has to be a pathway to accomplish something. There has to be a vision. You have to be able to have a pathway to accomplish that vision, meet that vision. We did it. We won, and then I went on to Tallahassee, where I served for two years. Great privilege. But for those of you that don't know, um, a state representative is like a state senator. Their job is to create the laws of the state of Florida and pass a budget. And they're only mandated to do two things in in the uh, legislature, pass a budget, vote on the budget, and show up for votes. So I say that, and I wanna ask a question. How many of you know who your state representative is or your state senators? 
probably don't think many of you do. Probably not. And if you do, try to get a hold of them. And try to get, you know, not only get a hold of them, but ask them to introduce legislation or create policies that improve your life. They work for us. They should, but they don't. Yeah. And so anyway, so, so now I'm here in Miami, I'm back. And have you guys ever heard the term, all politics are local? Uh, no? Yeah. Uh, most of what's decided on a day-to-day -day basis that affects our lives mm -hmm. is decided at the county commission. From that transportation I was talking about, to the housing I was talking about, to the you know, opportunities for companies, Young entrepreneurs, uh, opportunity opening up a business, what you guys have here, a podcast, can you imagine if you were able to take it into a network and grow it? Government is not there to give you the job. Government is there to create the opportunities mm -hmm. for you to succeed. Yep, I mean... And so anyway, that, that's why I'm running for, for county commission, because I think that we deserve better. You deserve better. So many people, and to your point, Robert, so many people think that the, the elections that matter are the presidential elections, the federal ones, but little do they know that the ones that affect you more directly is the local ones, mayors, commissioners, judges, things like that. So right on with that, I guess my, my follow-up question with that is, on your journey to politics, to becoming a politician, what obstacles have you faced and how have you overcame, overcome those obstacles? Well, I'll tell you from, from the first thing, right? It was deciding that I wanted to run because it really doesn't pay much. The state legislature pays $29,000 a year. And I swear they paid me less because I never, I was always putting money out of my pocket. <laughs> so when you decide to run, what do you do? Who do you go to? It's not like going to a store and buying a pair of pants. So you have to figure out, you know, the mechanics. And that was one of the biggest challenges was putting together a campaign. And then, and then deciding whether I was going to be part of the problem that I see. And part of the problem, the way I see it is legislators who solely cater to big money interests. Everybody's heard about that, right? But those are the people that contribute, not to their pocket, right? Contribute to their campaigns. Because it's very expensive to run a campaign. Or that I stay centered in what I wanted to do, which was represent my community and improve the lives of the people in my community. And that's what I decided to do. So coming back to the obstacles I faced. Obstacles I faced was that, sadly, the issues that are important to us, to many elected officials, they're not. They don't want to hear it. So it was me convincing them that they were important. And we were able to get a lot of bills passed. So, you know, obstacle, challenge, overcome it. Um, Another thing that, that, that I faced was raising money. Because if you don't have a lot of volunteers, you have to raise a lot of money because you have to pay for the services. And even though with volunteers, I still had to raise a lot of money. So for the county commission raise, I, I haven't raised that much, but we have to raise more money. We have a great group of volunteers. I would love, love for anyone you know, on this podcast to really think about joining the Save, the Save West Day movement. That's about us. It's something that gives us an opportunity to say, this is about us. Let's take care of the issues that we face. Yeah. Uh, if I could jump to the issues, what are the issues we all face? Those of you that are going to school, have you ever considered when you come out, what are you going to do for a living? How much are you going to earn? Those of you that have tuition and debt, student debt. I still owe my student debt. Um, I've been paying for a long time. And I'm sure many of you don't want to get saddled by $700 payments a year, I mean a month, right? So what kind of jobs do you have to have in order to, how much money do you need to earn in order to pay off $700 a year, I mean a month, plus your mortgage, plus the car, plus expenses, it goes on and on. But I look at that as a challenge because there are people who are making it, they're banking. There are people who are definitely doing well in the economy, without doubt. Those are the people who have been lucky, they've had opportunities. Well, I think we can expand that pool yeah. and give people opportunities. We're talking about offline, emerging industries. Many people are stuck at home, but one of the areas that is COVID proof 
disaster proof as the internet, right? Yep. What kind of businesses can you create on the internet? How do we create more opportunities for young people like yourselves? Mm -hmm. Those are the challenges I face. The, cha the biggest challenge I'd say, sum it all up, is going against people who are there, who are entrenched in this belief that, eh, we don't need to take care of them. We're good. What we're doing is good enough for everybody. Meanwhile, young people, middle age, it'll be people. Our grandparents are being left behind. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's creating a lot of fear. We need young blood, man. We need young blood. And, and I, I, I told you something when we talked on the phone that I want to get out. It's not too early. At 19, 18, 19, you know, 20, it's not too early to get involved. You have an opportunity. Right now, we, by the way, I don't know how many people know that there's an election coming up. Local elections, judges, count, uh, commissioners, school board members, uh, state attorney. The mayors. The mayor. The mayor of the county. All up for election now. The election date is August 18th. So those of you that have not registered to vote, please do before July 20th. I think July 20-something. Please vote, register to vote. Yep. And, it's, and it's safe to register to vote by mail, okay? So you don't have to go and get infected. But, but um, yeah, so, so we start voting by mail shortly after July, the 4th of July weekend. They start mailing the supervised election, mails out the, the ballots, and people start voting. So these elections are pretty much decided before election day. Yeah. And if you don't get involved and you don't vote, then how are you going to hold the others accountable? Because you know what? The reason why the, others, the, the people who, who like cater to interest, the people who are catering to the industries that don't give us opportunities, they don't care if many people vote because they're going to pay have X amount of people come out and vote. We have 130,000 registered voters in this, in, this, in this election. I mean, in this race. Last time they, they voted for this race, for this, uh, for this uh, seat, in 2016, every four years they vote. There was only 14,000, about 14,800 people came out to vote. Wow. Where's everybody else? Wow. So that's the other challenge. And then those are people that complain, the people that don't vote and then they complain. It's like, okay, well, why didn't you vote? Right. That's the, that's the issue I face with young people, with some of my friends, you know, I, I talked to some of my friends in school or whatever, and they're, they're saying, Oh, you know, transportation sucks. Or it took me like five hours to get to school today. I'm like, did you vote? They didn't vote. So how, what, how can you expect to make change if you don't vote? Yeah. And let's face it. Look, I'm Hispanic. It's in my nature to complain, right? We always complain, but but here you have an opportunity to get involved. Now, look, there are a lot of issues, and we can't resolve them all in one day or one cycle. But you know what's great is that you guys can go to school, get involved, go on to your life, do your, your career, get your experience, come back and run, and be the next group of, to take office. Yeah. Man, if this is about us, this is about you guys, right? If, if you don't take an active role in your life, who is? Yeah, and, and that's, that's much of the reason to back to your point of, of a, you know, what you said about needing younger people, you know, really being involved and, and getting into the community. That's much of the reason why me and Anthony even started this podcast in the first place. You know, we, we saw a need in, in the community, not only here in South Florida, but in the world of young uh, business like-minded people like ourselves, 19, 20, uh, 21, you know, up to 30 millennials age group of people that really need to be educated and need to be that, that next step, that stepping stone into uh, positions like yours to really make a difference, to voice our opinions um, in our community, whether it's local, federal, whatever the case is. So I think that's a huge point that you made because it really goes back to why, you know, we started this in the first place. Me and Anthony, we always ask, um, you know, what's our why? And that's, I think that's much to your point. That's what our why is to really spread the word, spread awareness, whether it's business, you know, whether you're in the healthcare industry, politics, whatever it is, there's always a need for young, um, you know, millennial 
Gen X like-minded people to really step up and, and take, uh, you know, the opportunity, you know, by the neck pretty much. And that's, I think that's what you're really trying to voice. Um, but to take a, a right turn here, I really want to ask you something that I know you mentioned there's a lot of uh, problems right now. There's a lot of challenges that we're facing, but one that's a pretty obvious one is, is COVID-19, right? And I want to ask you specifically, you know, I know you mentioned your campaign. It was very difficult, challenging. Yeah. I'm curious to know how, how has COVID-19 affected your campaign? You know, I know you said that it's, it's already been a challenge within itself. I'm sure COVID-19 didn't help at all. Um, I'm just curious to know, and I'm sure our listeners would, would love to hear that. I mean, it just destroyed the field. I can't go out there and meet with people, right? So, so look, let, let's, 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 put, let's put things in perspective. Let's, let's keep it real. Is there hype about COVID? That's questionable, right? I'm sure at some level, there's some level of hype. The same way as there's some level of downplaying it. But the reality is that we have a virus that's very resilient, very aggressive, and it's attacking people, okay? And it's putting people in the hospital, not everyone, but a percentage of people go in the hospital so people get sick. So our field, which most of the campaign is about getting out and talking to people, right? Face to face, because if I don't talk to you face to face, how do you know who I am? How are you even gonna to get to vote for me? Why would you even vote for me if you don't know who I am? Mm-hmm. So it's been a challenge getting out, and that's why I welcome this podcast. And I think what you guys are doing is admirable because I think that it's not just about, you know, talking about a politician. It's about really feeding information, keeping it real, keeping the information going to your peers. Um, that's what we live by, right? So, so it's it's forced us to do more digital. It's forced us to rely more on social media, and then it, social media has its challenges, right? Everybody knows Facebook. Instagram, Twitter, the others, they, they have their own algorithms and, and they'll only allow you to reach X amount of people because they want you to spend money. They commercialized it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's always a challenge of getting over that. And that's why it's so important to have young people, people across section of the community on these races. Robert, and, and we've spoken a, a number of times already, and you've told us what you plan on changing, what people have told you in your district that they want to see change. My question to you is, what's the first thing, if and when you win commissioner of District uh, 11, what's the first thing that you'll try to change in, in our community? There's a lot. So if you go to my website, robertessencio.com, and you go to the issues, you'll see a list of what I'm going to do from day one. So one of the first things is we have to address, we have to employ a multi-pronged approach because if I take, say I'm gonna address the light on the corner, it's not enough. We have to make sure that we have the county services, police, a sewer, a bus, transportation, all that, that, that that we're paying for, that we have delivered. And the way to do that is by, by first doing an audit of the budget. Because we know that West Aid, for those of you that, fit, that, that, that are into finance, West Aid is responsible for 15% of the budget, meaning in sales tax, <laughs> I'm sorry, property taxes, property taxes that come out of West Aid, or better yet, West Kendall, which is smaller than West Aid. West Kendall property taxes represent 15% of the annual, of last year's annual budget. And the annual budget, I told you guys, was almost $9 billion. Wow. So roughly $1.4 billion of our tax dollars goes there. <clears throat> so we have to make sure we're getting our return. And it's not just property taxes. Because every time you buy something, you're paying a half penny sales tax for transportation. If you go register your car, you're paying another tax. If you put gas in the car, that's another. You know, so what we consume is generating cash you know, dollars for the county. And I don't think we're getting enough. So that's the second thing. Well, the first thing is auditing the budget and at the same time going after making sure that the county services are delivered. Then, equally as important, we need to address the issue of work, right? So, and I keep saying it and I sound like a broken record, but it's all about money. And if you're not earning money, you're going to go someplace else. You're not going to stay in West Bay, wherever you live. You're going to leave the area. So when you come out of school, those of you that are going to come back with a, with a huge tuition debt, 
where are you going to go? Do you want to stay here? And if you want to stay here, then let's find the jobs. Let's talk to the industries that are willing to come here. By the way, everything I'm talking about are things that I'm going to work on aggressively. Creating opportunities and jobs, high paying jobs for people, young people, middle aged and older. Because right now we don't have enough of it. Removing, reducing through these type of programs and, and, and investing in the community, investing in young people, young businesses, we will be able to reduce the traffic. Increase the revenue to be able to not tax you, but increase the revenue stream so that we can pay for the services because we have a very demanding growing community. At the same time, create the partnership and partner with companies that are going to allow us to go into the next generation. There's a guy I've been talking to. He's part of a cohort that I was working with at, at Kennedy Space Center. He runs a company that they were started in South Africa. They, they were based in France. Now they're based in Central Florida. And they build small satellites. Three feet by three feet, three cubic feet. And their whole intent is to launch like 3,000 satellites up into this, the atmosphere, uh, stratosphere, right? Outside the, the Earth's um, gravity, outside the Earth's, well, out, out into space, right? And, and what that was going to do is that that is going to enhance the internet by speed and capacity like we haven't seen yet. They're two, maybe three years away from doing it. And then once they get done with the 3,000, and they've already launched like hundreds, then they're going to begin to the second phase. Why can't you guys benefit from those industries? And those industries create jobs in other areas. Healthcare, mm -hmm. county, legal, even, even something as simple as maintenance. Yeah. So those are the things that I promise my community that I'm going to work on immediately. But one of the most important things to stress, I'm going to bring leadership that is missing right now. And if you want to get a hold of me, you're going to get a hold of me. Maybe not immediately because you know I can't get a chance to everybody's call immediately because it's only so much time in the day. But I will get a hold. I will get back to you. One of my team members will get back to you. Your voice is going to matter. Absolutely. Yeah, I love that. And I think to go back, I mean, you've preached it this far. I mean, how important the youth is in your campaign. I mean, you said that you've, you, you give credit, so much credit to the high schoolers and to the middle, not the middle schools, the, I'm sorry, the, the college students that helped you uh, win your previous campaign and, you know, are volunteering in your campaign now. To, to all the listeners now, I mean, our demographic, they're young, um, very, again, uh, like-minded people like us, what, what can you tell them to, to really convince them that their vote counts? Because I have a lot of friends, um, whether in high school or even now in college, that they, they might think that their voice doesn't, doesn't, isn't heard, that their voice doesn't matter, that they're too young um, to, to say anything, to make a difference. And, you know, obviously you think different. We all think different. Our voice definitely um, is the only voice that's going to propel the future. So what can you tell our viewers to, to really convince them and, and just – Show them that their voice matters. I'll give you an example. So if you don't think your voice matters or your vote counts, remember the young kids, and I, and I can introduce you guys. Anybody who wants to meet them, I'll make a phone call and introduce them so you know that I'm not BSing. So there's um, there were a couple young people that went on and mobilized their young friends. <clears throat> Our campaign was a campaign that was never supposed to win because I'm not the establishment. It's that simple. I represent change. I'm not a rich guy. I'm a guy that's just tired and wants to create the change and knows how to create change. So um, we had young people go out and mobilize. The other side had outraised us. I think it was four to one, but they, some people say them six to one. The fact that the young people mobilized allowed us to win by 53 votes. The other side had enough money to blanket the entire district. They were paying for people to go out. 
because they were convincing him that was the only thing that that was the best car in, in the lot to, to buy. And if it hadn't been for the young people, we wouldn't have gotten elected. And we wouldn't have passed the legislation that we passed when we did. And we passed legislation that goes from consumer fraud, which helps everybody here at identity theft, all the way up to medical stuff, you know, prescription drugs, all the way to personal safety, and even addresses some of the, the people, what people are out there protesting about, right? Because that's the other thing is your voice is carrying. Um, so the injustices, because we were able to create some changes in, in the justice, in, in criminal justice, to create some positive reforms that, that created some positive changes and outcomes. There's just more needed. So think about this. Young people came out and we won by 53 votes. You know how many people voted in that election? So many. 63, almost 64,000 people. Wow. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I go to the show. Well, wow. your voice matters. And let me tell you, in a race like this, in the local race, it's the ones going to make the difference. Yeah. Because the other side is not talking to you. And if they do talk to you, I'll ask you to ask them why they voted against you. He's not really counting on your vote. I am. Because together, we can have a long relationship. Mm -hmm. And and Robert, this is a huge year. You know, over at, at uh, Miami Dade College, I'm the student government president. Uh, and by the way, whoever's, whoever's watching, Miami Dade College Kendall campus is a voting site, by the way. So, uh, you know, and we're one of the only campuses from Miami Dade College that is a voting site. I think it's Kendall and there's like one more, I believe it's like West Campus or, or whatever. But anyway, you know, I have the huge responsibility of making it known to, to my students, which is about 50,000 uh, students at, at the Kendall campus to go vote to go vote. So this is a big year. Uh, my, my executive board and I over the summer are planning different strategies and marketing uh, to, to let people know to go vote because our, our, our vote does count. Our vote does count. I can tell you that. Uh, Robert, my last question to you, because I know we're running a, a little low on time and I'm going to put you on the spot here. I'm going to make it a little spicy for you. Come on, bring it on. In politics, you know, you, you've had a, a very successful career, I would say. Is there anything that you regret doing or not doing in your time in politics so far? I do. I do. There was one vote that really made me feel dirty. But I, I voted because it meant keeping people on the job. And you know the, the privatization of prisons? Mm. Um, look, I'm for corporations making money, but I'm not about them taking advantage of the system. But, but anytime you do prisons for profit, uh, it, it creates an issue for me. So there, there's a company that has privatized prisons and they entered in a contract with the state of Florida and they were running short of money because the state funds them. And the current funding was too short, too, le too, too small to cover the employee salaries and they were gonna have to lay off a bunch of people. And I voted to give them more money. And that, that for me was such a, a vote that I, that I struggled with. You know why? Because it's taking our tax monies and giving it to the profit company. But unless, unless we did that, they were going to lay off thousands of people. And I can't stand with that. I can't stand for that. The other thing is, um, you know, there are many things that, that I would have liked to have been able to work more aggressively on, but because of lack of time, we just could not. And that is, you know, opportunities for young people, uh, human trafficking, uh, I mean, abuse on the elderly, student student tuition, that student tuition, we wanted to get it out, make sure that it was implemented. Miami Day was the first call, uh, system that actually is working on it. So those are the things that I regret. But I, wanna, I wanted to point something out. You just mentioned about your polling site at Miami Day College. My opponent, the sitting commissioner, voted against that. He was a sole dissenting vote. He did not want it at the college or university. And why is that? One well, we can say voter suppression. Why would, it, why would we not want? And this is not a Republican Democrat issue, okay? This, isn't, this shouldn't be, voting should be a personal choice. You know, it's a right we have. People have died to have, to, for us to have that right. 
So if he doesn't have the young people voting, and he doesn't care about your voice, what is what, what is that? What message does that send you? Mm -hmm. I would tell you to ask him. I fought for I fought for it at the at, at the Tallahassee, and then we'll continue to fight to ensure that they're fair elections, that everybody has an opportunity that's legally able to vote, meets and meets the you know the law, um, and 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 can vote. We should not suppress anyone's vote that is legally and authorized and duly you know duly able and duly authorized to vote. Yeah. Can I answer your question? Yeah, yeah, it does. Absolutely. So look, if I can just say this, I ask you guys to take an opportunity to get to know me. I don't know how much you know me in, in a little bit of time. Get to know me, get to know the people that are working with me. Join this effort. It's about time that we start, we as the people, start standing up to those that could care less about us. Mm. It's about time that we start expressing our voices as we've been on the street, you know, there's a lot of protests, but unless we change the people who are in elected office, the policies they create, the policies that, the, that we live by are gonna continue to be, there's no reason to change them. They're gonna be deficient. Let us fix some of the failed policies. Let us work towards a better day because you know what? We have incredible opportunity. In spite of the challenges we have before us today, we have incredible opportunity to be a better community, feed into the state, which is a great state, and feed into the nation. I love our country. We have the greatest, greatest country in the world. I travel the world. For those of you that are going to go join the military, my hat's off to you. Um, I served. I'm very proud of all who serve. Mm -hmm. And if there's anything I can do for anyone, whether you serve or not, I'm here for you. So please visit robertasensio.com. Call us, 786-708-1762. But please, give yourself an opportunity. Join an election because you know what? This election starts a week after July 4th. Ends on August 18th, God willing. And depending on your actions, will depend on who's going to be sitting in this commission seat for the next four years. Your vote cannot be any more important than it is today. We know it is one of the most important election cycles of your life. You will remember about this one in years to come. Thank you for this opportunity. Really appreciate it, Gabe and Anthony. Thank you. No, and just to just to wrap things up, I mean. Thank you so much. It was such a privilege and an honor to have you, um, someone that's seen so much success so far, but, you know, obviously isn't done yet. You have so much more um, in the gas tank for, for us because from what I got today is that you're really fighting for, for our voice um, and for everyone listening right now, if, if you got anything out of, the, out, of, out of this podcast is that your voice matters, your opinion matters, your vote matters. Um, and I believe you said August 18th is when the elections end. Uh, you said mail-in ballots are are uh, are being are being sent out. So make sure you guys are registered to vote for everyone listening. Um, send in your your ballot, whatever, however you're gonna get 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 yourself to the to the voters um, election. Just make sure you do that before August 18th. Um, but without further ado, thank you so much, Robert. It was such a privilege again. Um, we're behind you. We support you, and we thank you for everything that you've done and continue to do for our generation. Thank you. Let's ride bicycle together. Let's do it. Let's do All it. Right. Uh, right. Thank you for your service, Robert. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Good job. Take care.